everybody, welcome back to video two of the chainmail brush series. Today we're going to go over three different ways to make our pattern and how to set that up in our chainmail pattern file that we've made in the last video. So first I'm going to go over all the options that you can do and then I'll go over how to make them. The first option is what I used and the drawing I'll put here on the screen. I wanted something very simple just to kind of get the illusion that there was chainmail there and since it was a farther away shot and not very up close, I didn't really worry too much about the details. And this let me kind of shade on one side of the chainmail versus the other. There's also this method, which is very similar to the first, just uh, rotated 90, de uh, yeah, 90 degrees. This is um, a common method used where we can make the brush change the orientation or the rotation depending what direction we're making our stroke, whether this will be going left and then it'll be the reverse going right. Some people use this uh, for their chainmail strokes or brushes as well. And it has the same effect that um, I explained just a minute ago for the first option, where you can kind of control the highlights a little differently and make an interesting effect. And the last method is the full ring. Obviously it's not perfect, and the detail you would want may not completely be there, but we're doing a impressionist brush, not a, an exact ring. But if you want, if, if the chainmail you're making has bigger rings, or it's more close up and you want to kind of show what that um, individual ring better, this would be a good way to do it. So we're going to start with making the first two options. So as a note, when we make the brush, first you want to make sure our stroke is big enough. Let's switch my brush here. So around 200 is pretty good to start with. You can get a nice thick line. You can even go bigger if you'd like. This is all, you know, the stroke size is up to you. And the reason we're going to be making this in black and not say a gray is if we need to adjust the, the lighting on this, we can make our stroke with our brush, our pattern brush, and we can start um, locking the, the the alpha. Sorry, locking the alpha, making the highlights on it, and then blending it. Right. Obviously, this is really big, so it's not going to look great. But you can see how we can get a metal sheen by doing that real quick. And if it's a gray pattern, it's going to have a translucent effect when we make the brush. So black is going to be very solid. It'll give us more control to make highlights and shadows and add some more depth to our uh, illustration. So one way you can make the stroke here, you can use the mirror tools and just make, oops, put that back to black and just make the stroke. So we can start up for the middle and do this. That's one way of doing it. We can use our vector tool. So let's say we do that. Not perfect, but you get the idea. And if you want to have the points editable, you can always make a vector layer. Right? And then we can go back and edit that point. and then make it a little more of a curve and go from there. And then what we can do is we can go to the layer, convert it to a paint layer, and then duplicate it and merge it together after we transform it. So if we were to do that, we'll just duplicate the layer, transform vertically. There you go. Obviously not a perfect stroke here, but you get the idea. So we're going to delete that. And the same thing will go for the horizontal one here. You can do the stroke and use the mirror tool to make a nice um, a stroke here and have it copied over the other side or we can use the vector method as well. For the ring right here, this is really easy. I'm gonna go back up to our paint layer. We're just gonna use the shape tool our tool options going to make sure that there's an outline but there is no fill at all again you want your size to be pretty large for your stroke you can go ahead and hit alt shift 
to move your circle around and let go. And then you get your brush. Obviously you can go ahead and resize it later if it's too big to fit the square better. And there you go. So once you have your pattern made and you like how that looks, we need to save this. Make sure that this is a transparent PNG. So to do that, we're gonna go to properties. We're gonna make sure our background opacity is set to zero. If you don't use the background color, make sure that your background layer is empty or turned off. You really need to make sure that these checkerboard patterns are showing. And then we're gonna to go to File, Save As. Oops, I'm gonna go to my brushes. I'll make a new folder here and put Chainmail Brush Test. And we're gonna save this as a PNG. So now that in my folder, this is currently a Krita file still, which I don't want. I wanna to go to PNG and we'll just keep it at Chainmail V01. Actually, we're do horizontal. There we go. I'll, I'll name it so we can identify it later. And I'm going to do that for my other two patterns here. So um, if you have more than one pattern and you're going to follow along, make sure to save those and I'll see you in just a couple minutes. Now that we have all three of our brush patterns exported as PNGs, we're going to start bringing them into Krita in the main demo art file and then we'll show you how to do that with the brush settings and how it's really easy. It's not that hard. <laughs> so I'll show you how to do that in the next video and show you how we can start testing these brush patterns to see if they're working for us. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.